Hey everybody, it's me, Paul, with Reporting Live from my sofa. How's it going today? Today we're going to be talking, reacting, reviewing, recapping, whatever you want to call it, about the new trial going on. This is the case against Kelsey Thomas, who has been accused of the death of her child, Chloe. So if you want to know my reaction to the opening statements, what I think, how this trial is going to go, stick around. So July 2018, Kelsey was charged with the death of her five-year-old, Chloe. Now she faces first degree murder, as well as child endangerment leading to death. The mandatory is life sentence if she gets convicted on the murder charge, obviously. The prosecutors are saying that she murdered her child, Chloe, intentionally with the pajama bottoms by strangulation on July 19th, 2018. They also say that obviously she tried to make this like, oh no, it was an accident. Yeah, really what happened is she was playing and went in the closet and tried to make a swing out of her pajamas and like got caught up in them and choked herself to death. This is obviously a bit of a far stretch, but we're game to hear both sides. Basically, her own relatives tipped authorities off when they were like, we called her and she hadn't even told us that the child died. You know, they're like, hello. Now, once Chloe had gone through like the medical examiner or whatnot, her death was ruled a homicide, not an accident. And it, I mean, this didn't take long. It's like a week or so and they arrested the mother. And basically they were discovered, look, the pajama bottoms, the way that they were allegedly tied to this wooden dowel to make this swing, could not have supported the child's weight. Now, when she died, the mother, Kelsey, set up a GoFundMe, but that was eventually taken down. So let's talk about what the state said in their opening, what they're going to prove. The state says that Kelsey had Chloe when she was 16 years old and that the father basically cheated on her and left her. So essentially, this obviously left a bad taste in Kelsey's mouth. The state is essentially lining out, look, we're going to show you all this evidence that shows that the Chloe annoyed her, she distanced herself from her, you know, that she was just kind of over having this kid. He says even her mother is going to say, you know, she was asking me to take the child off of her hands. Now he's very like, he makes this very good statement when he says, we're going to prove that the last thing that Chloe saw here on earth was her mother strangling her. I mean, that resonates very strongly with people. So the state kind of outlines this chain of events, which essentially it's like, Kelsey went and put the baby down, Chloe down for a nap, then she went and sat herself and took a nap app to get ready for work and then she gets up a couple hours later she goes she checks she doesn't see Chloe in the bed she finds her hanging you know, in the closet oh my god she puts her in the bed and she's talking about stuff you know spitting up things of this nature happening and then when paramedics arrive they're like 3 30 they're like the baby was cold and lifeless so right away the timeline is like uh you know, with what she's saying took place, it doesn't really make sense. Now, the state also outlines all this stuff. He's like, look, you're going to see stuff about her being interviewed at the hospital after the death. You're going to hear jailhouse phone calls. Yeah, I want you to pay close attention to her demeanor, you know, the context of things, how she's saying things. Because basically what's coming down the pipeline is people were like, she didn't bat an eye. What's going to be rough for her is all the testimony coming from family members. You know, like I said, she has jailhouse phone calls to her husband where she's saying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, it was an accident. So, I mean, this is like a low-key confession here. We're going to hear another phone call, but basically the mother's on the phone and she's saying, what happened to the baby? I mean, she had to call to find out what happened. I mean, how bizarre is that? Now, we're going to hear from her cousin who says, like, yeah, she just acted completely unaffected by this. And, like, the day after the baby died, she was just kind of talking, like, oh, God, the media's already gotten a hold of this. And she was saying that Kelsey was basically depressed leading up to this because Chloe reminded her of her ex who cheated on her and left her. So that's not good. Now, Chloe had remarried. Chloe had a new husband and they had a kid together. And so this is like one of the catalysts here is she has almost like this new family. And so it was almost like Chloe was this reminder, you know, of, oh, you remind me of the guy who, you know, treated me like crap. And so her family members will say, yes, yeah, she treated the kids noticeably different. Yeah, you know, she did not give Chloe attention. You know, Chloe was a third will. And that's an awful thing. I mean, that's just a horrible thing. Now, another huge part going on here is the state has a confession on their side. So the state's like, look, she went from lying about it to confessing. So hello. Now the defense gets up there and they're like, look, I just want to remind everybody innocent until proven guilty, which I get, you know, but it's always kind of like, okay, that's what we're starting off with. Now the state says this was a false confession and that we're going to hear from experts. Now here's my thing, y'all. I mean, I, false confessions are a thing. There is a science behind it. They are figuring this out more and more. There are a lot of people in jail over these and I know it seems to us like, how could someone do that? Da, 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 da. You know, but I think each of these needs to be looked at. So when somebody rings that bell, I am definitely like, okay, I want to 
see this. Now, here's my thing with this case. The fact that the state is saying, look, you're going to hear from these family members who are saying A, B, and C. That's where I'm more like, yeah, that's this isn't good. You know, and we actually do in the first day, we the mother gets up there, the cousin gets up there, and they're backing this stuff up. You know, so they're not saying great things for the defense of their family member. That's where I think this case will hang is on all of the video evidence, the interview evidence, and the fact that, you know, you're hearing from the mother saying, yes, she wanted to give me the kid. You know, she didn't pay attention to the kid. And the cousin saying, you know, yes, she was like, you know, kind of happy to be done with this. So there's that. So, I mean, you know, right off the rip, I personally think she's going to be found guilty. Um, you know, I mean, obviously everybody gets their day in court here. I want to see the videotapes of the interview to see that. But even if you took the false confession part out, just some of the testimony that I'm seeing, unless the defense can rip that up, I'm like, yeah, this, this isn't good. It was a horrible, brutal way for that child to die. And the fact that the child was basically treated like, you know, some third will that didn't belong in her own family, all because her dad was kind of crappy, probably. I mean, really? Come on. So, you know, we're going to have to see. But that's it on this one. We'll revisit this one if everybody here at the Sofa Squad wants to. I really appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to check out all the links below. And I'll talk to you later.